It takes a lot of bravery to get your message out there, especially when it's so personal. And I see so many of you asking questions. Feel free to continue asking questions. Sometimes those stories uh, are life experiences, like the ones in Sandra's book. And very often for books we work on, it is a, a personal medical condition that leads to people really stepping up and saying, hold on, I can do something different here. And that is the story of our next two authors, Susan Tucker and Anna Austin. I'm going to uh, welcome them to the red carpet right now. I can't wait for you to meet them. Hello, Susan and Anna. Hello. So I love it. I'm bringing you guys close to me. I love it when we have co-authors um, here because it's such an interesting journey writing a book. And I hope it's okay if I share you are a mother-daughter oh, yeah. duo. <laughs> uh, just so you know, Susan's the mother. I know for those of you who are confused, um, we're going to bring them. Yep, bring you guys in. Make sure you're both in the shot because that way you'll know which one's the mother and which one's the daughter, even though it's a challenge. Um, and so I think it can be such an an intimate experience mm -hmm, to share mm -hmm. writing a book. Anna, I'm going to ask you to kick us off. Your book is called Thriving with Hypothyroidism, The Ultimate Guide to Losing Weight, Keeping It Off, and Living a Vibrant Life. I know that your personal journey was a big part of yes. how this book came to be. Can you share a little about your journey and about the book? Sure. Um, so I developed hypothyroidism at 11 years old. And it was really, you know, the work of my mom to get to the root cause of what was going on, you know, not, not settling for health, you know, the health answers that we got in the beginning and just really pushing forward. And, you know, now I really see that having a daughter of my own. Mm -hmm. So um, our book is all about empowering women to take back their health and take charge of their health. So, you know, not settling for the brain fog, the adrenal fatigue, the weight gain with inability to lose weight, you know, we just really want to empower those women to take charge and be your own advocate for your health. Such a like crazy story. I've never heard of an 11 year old with hypothyroidism. And I think as a mom, like when she's 11, you're a pretty right. young mom to be here. I think it's so easy to just listen to doctors, right? Yeah. That was the case. You know, we, I listened to what the doctor said. He said that, um, you know, to begin with, she was eating. She was overeating. And I kept thinking, well, we're eating the same thing. You know, I'm cooking meals. And why was she the only one having trouble? And um, so it wasn't until we moved away and went to another doctor that she tested her for hypothyroidism. And she was the most hypothyroid patient she had ever seen and at the, mm -hmm. uh, the youngest. She'd never had a patient as young as Anna. And at that time, um, I started researching everything I could possibly find on hypothyroidism in children. There was nothing. Only th less than 3% of children were diagnosed with hypothyroidism. And as you know, most hypothyroidism uh, is, in the, is an autoimmune disorder. And uh, that's that's what Anna's turned out to be, and so we're we uh, instead of like Anna said, instead of settling for what the doctors were saying, you know, you take take your medication and you should be normal. You would have a, a metabolism just like any other child, but that was not the case. And by the way, take your medication forever, right? Yeah, forever and the ever. The rest of your life. Right. And mm -hmm. up it as you grow. You know, you'll have to increase your dose as you go along. And we just didn't want to settle for that. You know, I knew there was a better way. And so we um, researched and found more natural ways to heal the thyroid. Such, such a powerful story. So you go through this, mm -hmm. probably over a decade and then some as a mother-daughter mm -hmm. pair. When did you guys decide to work together? When did you decide to do a book? Like, how did this go from your family to really helping so many people around the world? I think, um, gosh, you know, really being into, you know, fitness and healthy lifestyle changes and things like that for so long, they have just become our passion. Mm -hmm. And being able to help others, you know, find those answers and help others feel better, there's not a more rewarding feeling than that. Um, so we decided to, you know, start our own health and wellness business, and then that is where our book comes into play. Yeah, we started teaching um, uh, people across the state of North Carolina how to reduce their toxic burden mm -hmm. and to uh, take back their health and, and be healthier. And so there are a bunch of people asking, uh, how does having a book help your business? Has writing this book helped you to create your business? 
Uh, someone's asking, how can I create a coaching program with my book? Sherry from Dallas says, I want to create a book for my speaking business. So how did writing a book help you with launching your business or growing your business? I think that um, the thing, we, we taught uh, classes across the state, like I said, and we um, took part of that. Everybody was asking us as we would, when we would teach, teach those classes, what, um, you know, tell us everything that you do. And so we decided to put it into step by step by step things that we did. And so that's how we coach as well. You know, it's improved. It's going to help our coaching right. um, business. And we, um, you know, we're already getting a lot of a lot of leads there. But uh, it takes we're taking them step by step through mm -hmm. what our program would be like. And how do you feel like working with the author incubator kind of fit into that vision? Oh, I could not have done this without you, <laughs> right? right. I, I think that. We wrote the book together, uh, but your timeline, and we wrote it during the busiest time of the right. year, <laughs> November, December, and uh, New Year's. And so um, we, I think, stick into that timeline, setting yourself, you know, rewards for accomplishing and then punishments. If you don't, not, not necessarily <laughs> punishment, but uh, what are you going to do to, to uh, if you don't meet your goal? And so set, having those hold goals set, yeah, hold yourself accountable. And it was, it was just unbelievable the way that we our juices just flowed through that. I think even more important with co-authors because you sort of had an outside person saying here's when we know when this chapter is done. Right. You might have more opinions especially when you have two authors you can get right. stuck in going back and right. forth. Mm -hmm. So did it help you to kind of finish? Yes mm -hmm. and uh, it also helped us know we, we would toss back and forth okay what should go in each chapter so once we had everything outlined we decided what needed to go in certain chapters mm -hmm. and other things fit better in, in another chapter, so we would just um, brainstorm that back and forth. And so it's great. It's been an amazing experience. Awesome. Carmen from New Orleans asks, how important is having a goal in mind when writing your book? Mm -hmm. Was having a goal helpful for you guys? Yes. I think having a goal in mind is definitely super important when writing a book. I think it really helped us frame our book because we had an end goal in mind of what we wanted to accomplish. And then obviously working with you and your team, I mean, that just put that over the edge. So it was definitely having a goal is the way to go for sure. All right, Carmen, you heard it here from the co-authors of Thriving with Hypothyroidism, The Ultimate Guide to Losing Weight, Keeping It Off, and Living a Vibrant Life. Susan Tucker and Anna Austin, best-selling authors, you guys, if you know anyone with hypothyroidism, please share this book. Congratulations. Thank, Thank you. you so Thank much. Thank you so much.